Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Mr. and Mrs. Godfrey. Um, you see we have some materials here, because this is kind of going to be a collaborative episode. Um, we were actually just chilling in the house, like had no plans of recording. Um, and we had to sort beans for dinner tonight. And I was like, you know what, baby? Why not, while we're doing this, we just go to set the camera up and have one of the discussions we've planned to have for some time now, which is um, just sharing with you guys why we got married at the point in our lives when we got married. Like, what was going on in our lives? Why do we feel like God, you know, was like, this is the time? So while we're sorting the beans, we'll just be just in with you guys, just bring y'all into the house, we literally did not change clothes. I didn't do any makeup <laughs> or anything. I'm pretty sure I'm wrinkled. But um, yeah, so, and, and and fun fact, this is my first time sorting beans. Is that, is that I was gonna considered? I was gonna say that because beans? beans is one of my most favorite food. Like I, I eat everything, but beans, especially when you do rice and beans. So today is also special because my wife is gonna actually learn how to make Now my anger is that my anger is that we not in America, like literally as a child, this was one of the things we picked, they call it picking beans. Picking beans. Or okay. rice. You have this rice with sansan or call it what's blood. Rocks. And rocks and stones and mm. what we call it sansan. You have them inside and like sand basically and it's the part is the, the good part is eating it but the terrible part is sucking them out and yeah brian it. usually does this but he's at school and yeah. we'll be going so um we're gonna be doing it yeah and oh Period. so additional fun fact um we're going to be going to the the jones household mm -hmm. to get a bean cooking tutorial um just because you guys will remember palmira joined us a few months ago and she helped us to cook beans that day but we didn't record it <laughs> so now that it's time for me to cook beans again for the house um we froze them then but we we need more now so um esther is going to give us yeah, a tutorial this time so and mm -hmm. so what am i looking for first let me know Make, how this is done so the beans here, what's no, what's not no, a bean? I know what the bean looks like, but good. what? But you're gonna see. Um, pick one out. Pick a, a rock out, and let me see. I'm not saying you have to keep looking for. Until Baby, you, you sure? Let me see. I gotta check this. No, <laughs> my eyes are clear. That's I know. Um, so I don't know whether this one it has anything to do, but we just keep looking for. So you said it's like very time consuming, as if you have to go through like one thing at a yeah. time. No, 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 pick them like this. So when you and Brian did this, this was all y'all was doing, like yes. do a handful and then. And check inside, make sure there's nothing inside. Okay, okay. yep. So I, I'd like to go straight to our conversation. Okay. Um, so I got married. <laughs> I got married at 43. Mm -hmm. I was 43. And I have had this conversation with a lot of people that talk about the fact that I can't marry somewhere that I'm older than. Baby, you know what? Like Actually, you were 42. Oh. Because it happened in April. You turned 43 in August. And okay. this year, you're turning 44. What were you then? I was 32. 32. I was oh, yeah, one correct. month away from my 33rd birthday. So, I'm, so my wife is 10, 10 years old. Younger than I was gonna say, uh uh, never mind. I was gonna say, I was like, what am I speaking again? Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be helping. I, I was, yeah, I was doing my wife is 10 years. Is this years. a bean? Yes, okay. all of them are all. Oh, yeah, just check. Yes, yeah, so I'm 10 years younger. 10 years younger than me. I'm either 42, and she was, I was 32. 32. And before I got married to her, I'd say to myself, and I know a lot of you will say, um, we'll start 
saying things about me right now on, on this thing. I said to myself, I'm not going to marry anything more than 28. He said that. 28. <laughs> and it was so fun. Like, I was like, why you, why you need someone that much longer? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I was like, why do you need somebody that much younger than you? Now, his reasons sounds, of course, very different than what my assumption was. But my assumption is something that is very popular. I don't want to say just in American culture, but in the world in general. I feel like, not saying this was you, baby, but oftentimes older men want younger women because they're easier to manipulate. They're easier to no, mold. No. It's considered grooming. Maybe when an older man grooming, not who manipulate. knows that you know certain things aren't necessarily supposed to be okay per se, but he trains the younger woman to accept those things and to, Guys, to let those things that, I don't, pass. I do not agree with that. Guys, let's talk about I this. Just, I just like, yeah, it was you, but it does no, not happen. not me generally. It I happens. Think, yeah, that's one of the... Some people might have that as a reason, that's but... That's a stone, uh, stick. Yeah, but that's... Some people get married to younger people, well, um, number one, um, maybe it's easier to mold them, but trust me, some young people are not easy to mold because their lifestyle and everything about them is different. It's different. Yeah, yeah. so um, different people have different, but I, I do not want to just say... Um, use only the parts where I think it's a little bit um, not fair to say that um, it's only to manipulate them or one of the reasons to manipulate them or stuff like that. But you can't speak for someone else's experience, baby. Yes, but there could be other reasons. Why would not give No, I'm not saying reasons? that's the only reason, so but it happens other, very often. Give me other reasons. Nah. Well, okay, let's. I'll give them your reason. My husband's reason was because he said he knows that he has a very youthful personality, which he does. And he felt like if he married a woman in his age group, <laughs> she would basically tell him he's doing too much and be kind of like mothering to him. Yeah, I said he I've had, like he I've had my mother, uh -huh. and my mother is good. I don't want another mother. <laughs> mother. But the funny but, thing is, I feel like I act a bit older than my age. Yeah, sometimes. So sometimes, but it's not. It's not in. The, it's not like a in the neck in the, back the negative. Yeah. yeah, it's actually maturity more. So, um, um, I actually didn't want anybody that is even up to 30, it was that bad. So when, when I was introduced to my wife, I was told that she was 28 initially. Yeah, that's what the guy thought. And then I said, okay, let me, let me, you know, okay, okay. And, and the guy says, oh. I was actually 32. She's 32. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to send you some other friends or people that I know. And then she sends me all of these pictures again. And as I'm, as I'm looking at all of the pictures, my eyes were still going back to me. And I said, how about gone. this girl you sent me the first time? Look at I said, no, you said you don't want anybody over 30. <clears throat> She's 32. I said, let me see the picture again. Send me more pictures. And then that's how it started though. <laughs> okay, so that's... That's a bit <coughs> about, um, bless you, baby. Mm. Those so, are his He's over there, so uh, there. so that's how the whole conversation started about my wife uh -huh. and all of that. Um, you know, again, this basically just speaks of the fact that I was very honest about it. Um, if I'm, I, I've always known that if I meet my wife, I would know. If I see my wife, and he I told would me know. that. I mean, the, I mean, the day after, if you guys have seen any of our earlier videos, he actually said that to me the same day that I had decided, I had to say him, to him, but well, the same day the I decided that I did not want to talk to him anymore. Was that the first day we met? That was the first day we so, ever met in person. So I told this, you what in the car, right? You said, no, no, no. So yeah. after what had happened um, in his hotel room, I immediately excused myself. And um, if you want to go back and watch the video, you can watch it in that How Did We Meet video, right? I think it was part one. It was part one, I believe. If not, watch both, part one and part two of the How Did We Meet video. Um, but when I had left, he called me, and I remember, because I went to Chipotle, we were supposed to go to dinner, and we did not go to dinner that night. I ended up going to Chipotle on my way home. And while I was in the Chipotle, I believe, we were on the phone. I was standing in line, and he was like, no, we had talked in the Chipotle, but he texted me this. And he said, I always felt like if I met my wife, I would know it. And I feel like I met her tonight. He, you know, like, you don't have to say anything. But girl, in my mind, I was like, uh-uh. 
it ain't me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so yeah. he felt like he would always know when he met his husband. I was in a season of my life where I felt like I had not yet met my husband. And I had said that for a few years to my friends, just because as a woman of a certain age, you start to scan, you know, the guys in your life or in your sphere of influence, so if you will. And I was like, you know, I've tried to talk to a few guys here and there, and for one reason or another, it just, we don't mesh. You know, it feels like I, I'm either trying to convince myself to like them, or there's something about them that I know just isn't right for who I am, who God is calling me to be. Um, so I was say to my, I was saying to my friends for probably like a year plus around that time that I didn't believe I had met my husband yet. Um, so yeah, uh, where I was in my life, should I just kind of mm -hmm. share like where I was? So this was, we met in the summer of 2021. And this was like at the end of the pandemic, we're still technically in the pandemic, depending on who you ask. But this was like when things were starting to kind of like open back up. And I had just come out of like a very hard season of like God revealing so many deeply rooted like things in me that had been there for some time. And I had like, I think I refused to see them um, or kind of just made like excuses for certain behaviors. Um, and when God revealed those things to me, it was like I got hit by a truck. Like I was just seeing how to be very honest, um, yes, God's time is perfect, but and he and he does redeem the time, you know, when we when we get in his will and we get out of our own way. But it, he was revealing to me that the reason I had been stagnant, particularly in the area of relationship, is because I had been disobedient, you know. I had refused to like let certain things go, even certain people, you know, um, still engaging in like friendships with people from my past. And so during that, se it, that season, I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt, which lasted about a year, um, was the turning point for me going from a woman who wanted to get married but was not yet ready to get married and going to a woman who was very content, very confident, secure, knew she was in the will of God. You know, there was no shadow of a doubt. Not that I was perfect, but I knew that I was no longer allowing, you know, my myself to um, exist as less than what God was calling me to be, you know? So I will say, and of course we can't, we're not giving anybody like, this is what you need to do. We're just sharing what our experience was. But I would say that what took me from that one season to the next was being real with myself about the things that I was struggling with and the things that I needed to fully surrender to God. Um, and had I done that sooner, I believe, you know, me and my husband would have crossed paths sooner. Because Which I was about to get my okay, okay. <laughs> what would have crossed paths sooner. Okay. He saw okay. it's the beans in his head. Okay. But you know, they got his head. Um, but <laughs> you know, because you'll hear when he shares his side that he was actually in a holding pattern or waiting period for some time as well. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, I'm I'm not saying like this is what you should should do, but I do want to give like small, small advice. Um of uh, if you are a woman believing God for marriage and you're in that season of like, God, why hasn't it happened yet? You know, God, remember me. It, God is definitely either trying to show you something, grow something, tear, take something off of you. It, there's something that's necessary for you to get out of that season that you're currently in. Or it could be your spouse. Because while I don't believe that, how do I say this? I don't believe in soulmates per se, but I do believe that if God exists outside of time, he already knows the person that you end up with, the person that you end up with that's the best fit for you. And he will lead you to that person, you know, if you're looking to have a God-centered marriage. Um, so I believe that, if that makes any sense. And I believe that your spouse could very well not be ready, you know? So then in that season you're in, it might just require you to 
stay content, stay patient, and be praying and interceding for your husband or your wife. Because there were quite a few times where I did that and the very specific prayers I prayed was God, if my husband, of course I hadn't met him yet, if my husband is believing any other woman is his wife, but myself. May you break that relationship up <laughs> in Jesus name. May you bring my husband to me not one day later then I'm ready for him to show up in my life. Come Be on, very man. specific about your prayers. Like, God, if there's anything in me that is not ready to be the type of wife that the husband I want needs, show me how to be that type of wife for him, you know? And I believe God definitely did that because I think because I was single for so long, I, and I was also an only child until I was about 15, I enjoyed my own company, which works very well for the profession my husband has because he travels quite often. So I'm not calling him, texting him every five minutes from a place of I need to always be around people because God, that's just the type of person that naturally was before we met. So I kind of probably talked around mm -hmm. a few different Good. things. But I feel like you kind of got a, a general idea of what I'm saying um, can, can potentially be um, what is causing the delay for from a young woman's point of view. Um, and some practical things, uh, a practical thing specifically that's coming to mind to share is also, and I know this is probably more unique to American culture than Nigerian culture, but do not hesitate if you feel it will benefit you to get professional help. Like I did see a therapist for probably about six months or so, um, just because a lot of the things that God was revealing to me were so heavy and I, I wanted someone who had a certain understanding of how the mind works and personalities and how just everything ties together, making healthy decisions, being secure in your decisions. You know, I needed someone to kind of help me along in that process. So don't hesitate. Do not, the, the, the stigma, the, you know, the, the stereotypes of what therapy is and what it means. I didn't know what therapy was until I actually attended therapy. And I was like, wow, this is just like a bomb conversation with that super duper wise auntie, you know, that you go to when you just need some guidance or some wisdom. And of course you, you filter that advice through the Holy Spirit. Of course you should find you a Christian therapist. My, Christ, my, my therapist was a Christian. Someone who's not just gonna, who's not gonna be giving you third eye and telling you the chakras and the, I don't believe in those things but get you a therapist who believes in the God you believe in and the principles, the biblical principles that you believe in um, to just kind of help you along. You know, if you need, if you feel like the season you are in requires a little additional help. Uh, so, husband, yeah. what do you want to share with the, the young okay. men who are waiting for me, to find their wives? For me, um, my personal experience about waiting was um, was I felt I knew born not even feeling I knew I was not ready, and I honestly have met some amazing girls that um, that we are really ready to get married. And one of the things I I mean some of them those days I would just say man because I cannot she's not I mean it happened to me so much that most of them got married almost immediately. So everyone like I meet somebody and we are close we're friends and all of this and I'm. I'm I'm one of those that is, I'm very, very careful about anybody coming out and saying I broke your heart and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to get into, if I'm if not, if, if I ready. know that it was not going to work, no need of getting into religion, no need of talking about it. So I just tried to make sure that, so, but maybe some years later, I'll not say, man, I probably would have married that girl, I should have married that girl and stuff. So, but so my, you thought you had missed the one a few times? Yeah, because those girls were amazing. They were. <laughs> <laughs> you were cool. Now, uh, let me say this. For me, it was more of not being ready from a place of, uh, this is my own personal decision. It wasn't because um, um, it's a rule for everybody. I was not financially ready. I was not I've heard that often, mentally guys. ready. Mm -hmm. I know I was trying to pursue um, my ministry and I was focused so much on it that even coming out of that whole level of focus was even difficult at some point and I knew that I, I put myself in trouble because I worked so hard, I focused so much, I, I, I for about 20 years I slept for just 4 hours, just 4 hours for about 20 years, for about 20 years 
Um, um, I walked almost around the clock. I was always recording, I was always rehearsing. If you know me very well, I would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. But I had, I remember one event that we were applying for that we were rehearsing from 6 in the morning till 6 in the evening. 12 hours rehearsals every day for about a month. Um, for Monday to Friday. So, for me it was more about work. And because of where I was coming from um, um, as, as a family, um, we're born into chronic poverty. I think I probably probably know people don't know the full details, but I've shared this a bit too, but in, in some of the songs that I've written, you know, how we're very, very poor. We're terribly, ter terribly poor, you know. Um, and um, I didn't I didn't want to go through that poverty again because I, I felt like you know what? I've asked people, a couple of people that I've met that were successful, they say, just work hard, just work hard, just work hard. So, I, I never had anybody that sort of, there was nothing like therapy in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There's no, no uncle anywhere advising me, no, nothing. It was just all like, we, um, uh, um, the first child in my family, uh, our firstborn, at 12, he left the house. I left the house at 12. The one that followed left the house. At, so we're all leaving the house at 12, basically. So to go to houseboy, to go to, um, I don't know what they call it, but, but houseboy, basically. Now, um, growing up, I, I planned to marry at 25. Imagine between 25 and 42, almost. <laughs> Almost 20 years later. Didn't we all plan to marry at 25? Yeah, I, I, I really was... honestly wanted to get married at 25. But I, when I was 25, I was still broke. I was still struggling. I didn't want to bring any woman into that kind of um, situation. Um, I didn't want to... I, did, I knew that even if I... Got, if some Something told me then that if I got married, even my career would be destroyed. Like, it was almost that bad. So, but somehow... Yeah, if you're, if you're not, if you don't trust it, just keep it out. Um, somehow, um, I started delaying, okay, maybe when I'm 30, when I'm 32, when I'm 35, I just felt like it was not yet time. But at the point when I was getting to late 30s, I started feeling like, okay, yes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But now, the opposite and the twist of it is that you don't, you now don't know who loves you for what you are and what you have, I suppose who genuinely care about you for who you are. Mm -hmm. So that was, that became another struggle. But my waiting was actually based on the fact that I didn't want to, um, number one, struggle in marriage, number two, bring somebody else when I knew that I was not ready to come and struggle with me in marriage. So I waited it all. And I'm totally glad that I did. Yeah. So that's basically my own weight. Now, um, in another episode, we're going to share on waiting because I want us to have this as a different topic. We want to discuss later what to do when you're waiting. I mean, you've it's shared kind of a couple of them, but yeah. we're going to go dive. We're going to dive deep into what waiting is and what you should do when yeah. you're waiting. Yeah. So um, hopefully, when we, I, I, you're not going to be here when we're eating this bean sha. But I hope this has helped you basically to know that yeah. you know um, I, some people marry when they were. Poor and broke, and, and they, they grew up with the, yeah, and all of those things. But today, most ladies will say, I don't know, guys in the chat, just let me know. Most ladies will say, eh, marry potential, no marrying any potential. But and the, the other side of that, though, and of course, this isn't everyone, the other side of that, though, is these women have probably heard the experiences and stories of other women who have built with men to the point of success and then those men end up leaving them for a woman who would not have chosen to be with them before they were successful. And to me, that speaks to the character of the man. So while it does, it is hurtful to build something with someone and then they walk away from you, you dodged a bullet in my opinion. Like, yeah, you, you may have, to adjust your lifestyle, you may have to change, you know, a lot about how you're living um, during that transition period, but God is just gonna bring you someone even better who sees your value past whatever, you know, physical or whatever it is um, that, that had him to make that decision. But that's why a lot of women don't do it because they feel like I'm gonna put in all these hard years and this hard work and he's gonna leave me for someone else once he gets quote unquote on. Let me know in the comment section, do you believe in marrying potential? 
Why? <laughs> Wait, the fact that you're laughing, do you think that women should believe in that? Because some men even tell you but not it's still to. it's possible if I've had work. men tell me not to. I've had male friends Let us say know in the comment he session. should be at a certain level before he even approaches you because you yourself are at a certain level. And I think this, honestly, it depends on the person. And let me saying, tell you something. Let me, wait, 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 let me finish my thought, please. Not saying that one decision is better than the other. I think the individuals involved have to be secure in this decision that they're making. And it has to be a decision that's, that's God-led. You're led by the Lord to do this with this person because... It, it does come back and bite you in the butt sometimes. If First of all, it just depends on if it's the right person or not. If it's the right person, I think y'all can go from rags to riches together. And you know how, uh, with, I forget who said it, but you know, basically she's with you shooting in the gym and y'all make it together and you build a beautiful life together. I think that that's very possible. But I do know men and women who feel like that's not a smart decision to make. So, Let me tell you something. Maybe. I want to say something. Mm -hmm. And then we'll close here because I think we've gone almost 30 minutes. Now, um, I, 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 I was, I love, uh, there's one girl I met in church. You were saying you love, what you love? You love what? There's one girl, I, I used to, I, you know how you're eyeing one girl in church every time? He loved before he met me. <laughs> trying to <laughs> someone courage to talk to the girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, some of my friends that know this, that was there then would know the story. And I couldn't talk to the girl because the girl walks, she is really classy. I think you, and, <laughs> I feel and, like you told me and, about Wait, 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 hold on, I'm sorry. Did we ever see this person? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, no. different story. Okay, sorry. No, no, that's not the person. I'm, I'm going to talk about that one. So, <laughs> and then I, I had told one of my friends to go and check if she's single or she's seeing somebody. And my friend went and said, and she probably asked my friend, why are you asking? Say, I have a friend that likes you. I say, who is that? The guy that mentioned my name. Guess what the girl said? That's church rats. This is the same person you tell me about. You that probably don't no, remember. This one, but we, so the, the so two person, people, two, two the women. The second person was one that said some wearing coats up and down. Coats. It was coats oh. that I mentioned. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> so the first person was that church rats. That me. Like, it was me that called church rats. Oh, and because then everything I did was in church. You know, worshiping my God, use my gift to serve God. The lady called me church rat. She was, she couldn't have been a Christian. The second person, they, they literally laughed at me that I'm wearing coat. You know how I, you know that time, you, I don't know what I was wearing, Sha, but I know that it probably would have been funny. That I was wearing coats. That one that wears coats. So they called me so many names then. You know, I've had people, those days, people, there's not, they said a lot. But some of those people, I ended up helping them later. They couldn't see yeah, what was on the inside, then, past yeah, the external. All they were saying. So, so me, still tell me, is it okay to marry potential? We'll be wrapping up here because of time. This one focus on these beings. We'll come back and discuss on waiting again. We have, we have so many things we want to share with you yeah. about what to do when you're waiting and how to be, when you meet the right person. Yeah. How you know? Like personally, I knew when I met her. I told her straight up. And guess what? Going to two years. Let's go. <laughs> yes. All right, God bless oh, you. And pretty soon, we're going to be taking you guys uh, on, on, what's the word I want to use? On location with us. So, you know how we usually do like our, our episodes at home? Well, oh, yeah. very soon, we're going to be else? going somewhere and we're going to take going you guys to different with places us. And, take, and just show no, you. No, that's the second. I wasn't even yeah. talking about that. I'm talking okay. about what we're doing like in the next week or so. Okay, sure. Right. Yeah, that's so, good. we're going to take you guys with us. It'll be like a, um, a different, you know, type of Mr. and Mrs. Goffey episode. But yeah, we love you guys. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications and share this video with someone else who you believe it may help. And I will get back to sorting these beans, which I don't see any rocks in. And I feel like my husband probably just wanted but, to go. Yeah. Those, Anyways, are, those yeah. are just unpretty beans. Leave these beans alone now with this. Look at this. Oh, oh this, this is, is this one? Is this a rock? Yeah, that's it's a rock. See? <laughs> see how good Literally. It is. See how God did it for me. See. My God. Literally the first rock I've seen in 30 minutes. My God came true for me. Dang, submission, submission. When your <laughs> husband tells you to pick beans from rocks, don't tell him there are no rocks. <laughs> Anyways, um, just as an extra, um, if you live in the US, 
uh, especially in the DMV area, Fearless is coming to you. Yes. Um, November. November 17th. 17th. Uh, we'll put a link in, in here. It's going to be amazing. Anyway, we're going to stop there. God bless you. See you next week. Bye. So thank you guys for joining us for another video. We're taking you guys small, small, you know, through our That's meeting and our relationship. Small, small, small is the Nigerian accent. <laughs> We're taking you guys through our relationship. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, mm -hmm. comment, mm -hmm. subscribe, share. turn on your post notifications, and share. share. Um, because other people can be blessed by this content as well. That's my wife. <laughs>